Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, thank you again for uh, for this opportunity to talk about Matomo. Uh, I love Matomo. I love free software in general. And uh, this talk is about uh, hardening Matomo in, uh, in terms of security. And this is uh, not really oriented to super experienced uh, users. Uh, this is more oriented for uh, um, from curious persons and to beginners. And uh, um, But there are some, some things that can be discussed together. Uh, we've experienced the people and um, some uh, I'm here uh, from the Italian Linux Society that is an association in Italy, uh, a volunteer association uh, talking about uh, free software and open source software. And um, in Italy is very uh, interesting uh, this period because uh, everything everywhere is talking about um, Google Analytics and Matomo and I will talk later uh, the reasons. And I'm also an IT consultant for Wikimedia Switzerland and a volunteer sysadmin for the Italian chapter, uh, the Wikimedia Italian chapter. And um, let's say something that I'm not uh, an investor in Matomo. I'm not uh, so, someone who uh, train users about Matomo. I am just a volunteer um, spreading Matomo everywhere and, uh, because I like uh, what... Uh, I like this tool, I like uh, the problem uh, it fixes, and um, I like data ownership, and I like that the, it's uh, free software and uh, open source software. And um, so I'm here from Italy because some months ago, uh, the Italian uh, Data Protection Authority said this interesting news that uh, Google Analytics is now banned in the whole nation. And this is really interesting because it really means what I said, it's it's not uh, something related only to public websites, is um, like public administrations, like schools uh, or etc. It's about also uh, private websites, and um, and in fact, uh, the whole uh, the whole story was about uh, uh, that. Even the IP address is considered a personal data. And so if you have a website with Google Analytics and the user visits the website and, your, and you send the, the IP of your visitors to Google Analytics because you have embedded this tool, it's not a very good idea because, um, because Google is uh, capable of enrich this data and uh, connect the IP to their uh, logged in user. Or, and, and so this is, is um, this is really a violation of the GDPR in Italy and also in other nations. And um, I'm telling this because um, it's also uh, something related to security because uh, you know that uh, in the United States, uh, the intelligence agencies and the government, if they want to investigate on a, a user, they can access the data and uh, if you are an European visitor and you do not live in the United States, it does not matter. And so um, this is why um, there are not enough safeguards at the moment. Um, and so a lot of people in Italy is talking about Google Analytics. This is just to talk about um, something I, I have seen with my eyes in the last months. And uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, good job, Google Analytics. And um, so let's talk about uh, security. Um, there are two ways. Um, okay, one moment. In this period, everyone in Italy is uh, avoiding to embed anything. So they are also closing YouTube videos and, uh, and they are adopting a lot of open source and they are also passing, migrating to LibreJS. I don't know if you know the LibreJS project, but is something uh, that says that every single JavaScript lines on, on, on your website should be open and Libre software. And so uh, I, I'm not saying that everybody in the world should adopt the Libre, the Libre JS. And, but uh, I'm saying that this is the moment to talk about the, this, uh, this opportunity because uh, it's, it's very hot this period. So, um, okay, we like Matomo. Uh, we deploy Matomo on our servers. We deploy Matomo on, on our Raspberry Pis. We deploy Matomo using a Docker, using a, a cheap hosting services, using, um, I don't know, 
we host Matomo in a lot of ways and it's very hard for some people, for also for beginners, but also for intermediate people to understand that there are only two ways to make a system safe. And uh, the first way is the Kirchhoff principle that is really, really, really um, okay for open source software because you, if you have an open source software, you have to think about it. Everyone in the world knows how your system is designed and you have to keep your password secret and uh, only the password is the stuff that you can have to keep secret. And so uh, the other principle is have everything simple and stupid because if you are, don't understand how you are applying security measures to your system, you will never be able to um, have a a well-designed environment and a safe environment. So I just suggest these uh, two principles, the Kirchhoff and the KISS principles. Uh, let's start saying that the easiest way to uh, keep an, uh, a system safe is, this, is to apply a lot of mitigation, a lot of mitigation to reduce the attack surface. Because when you have a big environment like a media wiki, like a WordPress, like a Matomo, there are a lot of lines of source code that you have to trust. And uh, I'm not saying that I don't trust Matomo. I'm just saying that it's a very big project and that shit happens. And so maybe a contributor have done something wrong uh, in the very uh, early phases. Maybe um, what I mean is that there are a lot of possibilities that uh, one line in this number of PHP lines or one line in this number of JavaScript lines, that there are a lot of lines of source code maybe there is a vulnerability and uh, so it's not a matter of if it's uh, a matter of when uh, this problem will be discovered and this is not related to matomo this is related to whatever project we can design in our life an interesting part of matomo is that uh, the plugin directory is involves uh, maybe the majority of the um, of, of the line of codes and uh, maybe because uh, Matomo is very well decentralized in terms of uh, of its design so each component has its own plugin and I really like this uh, this fact and uh, so uh, the first thing that we can suggest to uh, reduce the attack surface of your Matomo is just a uh, reply to this question so how many plugins have you in your installation and um, and if you have uh, your Matomo, you, you know that you can go to the system menu and to the plugins and see the active plugins that uh, maybe, uh, this is not a recent screenshot. Uh, this is my platform some uh, days ago, but uh, um, I think that there are, uh, there are a lot of plugins that maybe you are not using just from the screenshot. Maybe, um, I don't know if, if I can um, highlight the DB stats uh, plugin that uh, allows to do reports for super users. So it's not something uh, delivered to users, it's something for super users. Uh, a lot of people, honestly, I don't use this plugin. So um, I am not saying to disable this plugin. Uh, to disable a plugin, by the way, you can click on the link on the left um, and to activate the other link. But I'm saying if you are not using the e-commerce plugin, the example API plugin, if you are, if because maybe you have just a blog, maybe you don't need to, to see examples. Every plugin you disable, you are reducing the surface attack of your platform. And this is really, really good because, um, because whenever you want, you can enable these plugins again. So it's not a problem of, uh, of destroying your platform. You can, whenever you want, enable it again. And so uh, also the marketplace. The marketplace is maybe a very big plugin and uh, with connections to the web. And so there are a lot of code that needs sanitization. Uh, that, that needs uh, filters, etc. And so uh, I suggest uh, when you installed something from the marketplace to disable, to disable the marketplace, why not? And also maybe not all the people have 
an SMS gateway on the Matomo. So I just suggest to <laughs> disable the SMS gateway. So I think this is just an overview of uh, something that you can do. This is a, a list of all, a lot of plugins that uh, I, I have not in production and uh, I, my, I may recommend to verify that you use them as well. And uh, also, uh, let's talk about maybe the two-factor authentication. The two-factor authentication is really an. Uh, I really like uh, the the way it was implemented, and uh, I recommend in uh, enable enabling it uh, if you need it. But if you are not using it, <laughs> feel free to disable because, by the way, you. Uh, you can always uh, enable it uh, in the future, but um, it's not strange to s to listen someone saying that, that the two-factor authentication may be disabled in a in this this kind of talk. Uh, um, I mean that. Uh, um, sometimes it's, it's not a very, very, very good idea to uh, enforce this kind of tools. Enforcing uh, tools like multi-factor authentication in whatever tool uh, may be um, counterproductive, may be problematic because maybe not all your users are trained to handle the two-factor authentication uh, side effects for example they need to have a mobile phone and their mobile phone they have an application and their application must be uh, must not be malware and so there are a lot of components that a two-factor authentication can can uh, worsen can um, a lot of facts that can be can, can be not improved, can cannot improve. And so, for example, um, what about a lot of social media managers that not don't know anything about uh, advanced security measures? And so uh, maybe they just need to have a very strong password and uh, we, without uh, risking to expose their mobile phone to to additional vulnerabilities. Uh, so do your evaluations. Uh, maybe don't try to enforce the tool to every user in the world. Uh, just try to have uh, rigid password politics, uh, very strong password, etc. And uh, again, do your evaluations. By the way, if you want uh, to try uh, the best, I think that for me it's the best, the best um, one-time password uh, application that, uh, that I use with my Matoma installation. I, I think I, I have a very old Matoma installation, but I think that it still works. Just uh, contact me if uh, it, it's not. Uh, the free OTP is an uh, application from FDroid. You, you know, FDroid, it's a repository for Android smartphone that only contains free software. And it's very, very, very verified. It's open source. It's, and this application is easy to use. And uh, so I recommend this. Uh, software and if you have a lot of users and, and if you are enforcing them to use free OTP I recommend in doing it only if they have an uh, Android and uh, if they have uh, uh, if uh, they have not customized a lot the phone if they have maybe um, disabled the Play Store or uh, this kind of stuff um, um, so a lot of people ask uh, what if my Matomo is compromised? Uh, this is not a good question. This is very a terrible question. But I, I can think the, the simple, uh, a very simple way uh, you can mitigate the risks after your Matomo was compromised is to enable this uh, option to uh, anonymize as much as possible all the EP addresses of your users because uh, when you activate this option, you know that Matomo the, is, do not save this information in the database. And this is awesome. Matomo does not save this information. And uh, so if your database is hacked, it does not contain this information. And uh, there is less data to be disclosed to the, to the entire universe. So this is, may seem uh, stupid, but um, this is not stupid. Um, so, uh, we are here to understand uh, when we are downloading Matomo uh, on our server, we want to understand what should be exposed, what should be maybe writable, what should be maybe hidden. Um, and so, 
So uh, I recommend in the don't trusting this talk, but just reading the amazing official documentation of Matomo. I think that one hour in reading the Matomo's documentation can save your company. So please read the documentation. But the, well, in, in short, uh, we know that when we download Matomo, whatever version we know to understand, um, the, each file, uh, what should be its user, uh, what should be uh, its permissions, uh, who should uh, see this file, who should execute this file. This is a very important question for a, a system administrator. And so, but before talking about permissions, we, we need to understand how we are using Matomo. A lot of people uh, is uh, adopting Matomo through this method that it's the PHP FPM method and a lot of people without knowing about it is adopting Matomo with this component that it's the mod PHP mode. So the, we are, we have two methods. We have uh, two very dif dif different methods to adopt uh, Matomo. We have also Docker machines, obviously, but these are probably the most adopted uh, situations. Uh, I have done an interview about it, a survey, and uh, they are very widely known. Uh, a word about uh, the um, PHP me FPM method, how to understand that you are using this method. You, you can see that you are using this method if when you do one request to your web server, on these ports, there are not Matomo, but something else and your Matomo is under another web server running on your machine, but on a different port. This is um, probably, if you have this situation, you are under the PHP FPM configuration. Instead, if you have just a web server um, and uh, nothing else, probably you are under this configuration, the mod PHP. So let's see deeply the mod PHP. The, the mod PHP version is an interesting and historically very, very widely adopted configuration because it's very, very simple to install on uh, your Linux server. You just run uh, apt install um, Apache PHP and everything works. And um, so you have a very big process under uh, your uh, Unix uh, machine, under your Linux. And uh, usually the Unix user is www data. This is the name of the, of the Unix user because you know that in Linux, every, every, syst every system have its own user dedicated to that system. So you have a web server daemon with its user. You have a mail server daemon with its user. And this is how it works. You have one Unix user running the whole web server, listening on a port, uh, maybe maybe this port or maybe the HTTP port. I don't, I don't know. But um, there is a very big process handling whatever website you have in the, your single server. So maybe you have one, two, three applications, uh, two domains server by the same server, and only one Unix user handling every request, every, every request. And um, this is not optimal for most situations because if you have uh, an application, then a Matomo, then a WordPress or over the same uh, process, over the same Unix user, what if uh, maybe uh, this application is compromised? Uh, this is problematic because uh, maybe the, the this problematic application can go in the parent directory and go up and inspect other applications and so can expand and uh, and write other stuff in other places and so uh, it's not usually a good idea there are a lot of very cheap hosting services offering this as default and you users usually don't know about it um, a lot of users adopting this uh, system um, to do this together with this uh, directive. What is this? Uh, the open base this directive. If you have PHP, if you have PHP uh, running uh, on a domain server on your server, you can say, okay, um, if you visit uh, 
example.org, you can only visit this place. And you can, if you visit uh, example.net, you can only visit this place. And uh, the process cannot go in the other places. And uh, this is possible thanks to this directive that can be set in PHP on each uh, virtual server in virtual host. So, uh, but the problem is that uh, this directive is that if you use it, uh, for example, if you declare, okay, I declare open base dir um, is var vovu uh, home uh, matomo. I don't know a place on your file system. Then you have another web server another virtual host and you say another value so you can set a different value for each virtual host to try to isolate the process the problem is that uh, php is isolating the process and in fact uh, this is a, a, an apache configuration is, is a very frequent configuration uh, so you have a server name and uh, so all the people uh, from this domain go to this place and uh, then you say you declare this directive to isolate the process and so you know that you cannot go out of this place and but this is not really really safe because if you read the documentation it's it's very very clear that open based here it's not a security measure it's an extra safety I don't know what the next safety is but the the universe is adopting this as an uh, a security measure and they should stop and uh, so if you see a configuration like that stop adopting this because it's not really safe and um, so let's talk about the php fpm method this is a, a very very frequent uh, uh, alternative to the to the to the mod php so this is the old uh, configuration this is the new configuration uh, was uh, invented to have isolated processes that work alongside the a front-end web server so you really have a front-end web server serving maybe static files and then you have an underlying web server serving dynamic files with each its own uh, unix user and uh, so it can be isolated and uh, it runs on uh, its dedicated port it's uh, so uh, it's completely separated um, now you can say okay i have a docker my configuration is different but it's not so uh, different because if you have docker also with docker you, you have a front-end web server that usually is a guy engine x or apache and uh, then you are your docker running on the random port but what i'm saying is that usually docker is not in this position usually docker is not exposed to uh, handle every request for https and every request for um, http usually you have a front-end web server also because uh, it simplifies um, it simplifies uh, let's encrypt renewal I, I don't know or it allows to have a lot of websites in your um, server and um, mixed by the apache web server so what i'm saying is that this is a very frequent situation and um, how to secure this situation um, let's talk about how it works so you have a front-end web server you do a request and your front-end web server handle it what is your front-end web server? We said it, it's Apache or Nginx, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, one, uh, one or the other that not, does not matter in this discourse. In this talk, uh, what I'm saying that uh, if you visit example.org, maybe example.org, your request go directly to the, uh, to the correct PHP FPM web server. Maybe if you want, so if you want uh, Amatomo, you visit this uh, backend <laughs> web server and the reply goes to the user. And if you want uh, your blog, maybe, maybe you have a blog, your request go to the other web server. And uh, so every, every site have its dedicated port and the user usually don't connect directly to this port. Um, 
so this is this is the situation uh, every application of course has its dedicated file system path name and uh, the interesting part is that uh, we are not in a situation where we have uh, a big user with access to all these file systems but instead we have a dedicated user with access to that specific file system place and so we have another user we have access to the other file system place etc etc so and this is allows a lot of isolation if you know how to do it <laughs> and um, that's also you still have a Unix user and uh, you still need to know that this user probably needed to access this file system but just for static files for example and then you have another Unix user that must have access to this file system for the dynamic files so PHP files are executed by this user and statics file are provided by the www data user so this is how it works and this is a basic example on the, how to implement everything on your web server maybe you have the front-end web server apache configured in this way to say that there is a document root somewhere and then i have not put it there but you can uh, imagine that in in the next lines we have the proxy proxying all the requests on the underlying web server and this is the most important part of our talk how to have a php fpm safe uh, secure and hardened first of all you have to create a dedicated user for your purpose and be sure that only that user can access critical places in that file file system of your application so you can declare a php directive to say that the uploaded files must be in a place and only this user can be assigned to this place to access the temporary resources or i don't know or but if you uh, additionally want to set other uh, strange directive to harden even more why not this is a, a good strategy to use open based there in a right way so using to give something more uh, so to uh, to have everything under a, a cage an additional cage but this is not the only cage of your system this is the cage of your system a dedicated user and a dedicated file system path name with correct permissions so uh, for example on your file file system on your file system you have your matomo installed uh, in this position uh, deployed in this position and uh, you have the temporary directive that is this one and its permissions are its user it's the one in your in your uh, your fpm web server and its group it's the one assigned to the, the same process and uh, look about this permission field if you know how to read this field it means that uh, let's clear everything okay what i'm highlighting here is that this apache matomo is the user who can read write and execute this in this file so execute in a directory context means that they can access this file and the, the user group as well can do the, uh, the same things but all the others cannot so you have hardened your installation removing privileges on uh, critical path names this is very very important and so again use your uh, configuration to uh, dedicate a user and have a path name and declare your configurations in order to instruct the process to use your custom uh, path names instead of just tmp that it's global and uh, and uh, and so this this is simple but effective um so if you are uh, curious about uh, how to put everything in a very very robust cage i suggest to just assign everything to the root user 
and to the root group. This is, this is not scaring. Sometimes uh, we hear, uh, oh my God, uh, uh, the root user uh, should not execute this file. Don't be confused. If, an, if a file is owned by the root user, it means that only the root user, only the root user can read, write, and execute. And if this file is owned by the root group, so you know that user and group, it means that only the group can read this file. And all the others, well, all the others for this uh, markdown file can read this file. Why not? But cannot write in any way. Also, an interesting part, uh, um, take, for example, the matomo.js. The matomo.js file needs write access. So you can assign it to the dedicated user and to the dedicated group and saying that the dedicated user can read and write, but every other user in the, your system cannot touch that file. And this is very important. Uh, this file is not secret. Is there is no need to remove the read access, the last read access. So it's uh, evaluate, uh, always evaluate the last column that it's the most important one declaring what other users in your system can do with this file. And so, for example, uh, I have removed the, you see that the temporary directive have has nothing in the, I have not highlighted it correctly, but has nothing in the last uh, permissions. So uh, the temp directory can only be wrote by the Apache user and to the Apache group. So this is what I'm saying. Evaluate your application, understand what need read access. So probably everything need read access, you know. What need write access? So for these files, you assign the dedicated user. What needs to be hided to everybody but your users? And so you uh, do the same, but without the other field, uh, without allowing other users to read, write, and execute. Um, OK. Um, I don't know what I'm showing here. OK, what, I, what I'm... Um, what I want to say is that um, this is not easy. This is not easy. You have to read the documentation. You have to uh, uh, understand that the config directory may be public, but the files inside the config directory have to be private. So inspect your application, read the official documentation, uh, be uh, use the change modality for the files and use the change own, owner for the files wisely. So uh, this is really how your application can be hardened in the great way. Because the nice part about having some files owned by root is that uh, it's like whatever other service in your Linux system is designed. Try to uh, access other parts of your system if any other process, for example, if you install, I don't know, um, I really don't know, Apache, for example, Apache, every file, the system file of Apache is owned by root. And only the system, the super administrator can edit this file. And this is the same for your Matomo installation. So um, you should have a script to harden your installation when you want is freeze it so you want is like in a, in a not upgradable state and a, a script allowing to put everything under the user of your web server to be able to upgrade your system so you should have two configurations two scripts and one uh, for everyday usage for production so you run the script and set your permissions in this way. And another script uh, that put your permissions like in whatever cheap hosting environment. And so uh, with every file assigned to the web server users. But this is problematic because uh, having every file under the same user means that uh, if there is a security issue in your application, 
this user can write in every file of your environment and this is not the desired situation so uh, it can be uh, it can be a uh, stupid but trust me um, if take care about your applications matomo included wordpress included and um, and uh, if you if you <laughs> want to have everything um, in, in a good state, I recommend in having a kind of uh, uh, hardened production configuration and uh, upgrade ready configuration. So um, I'm ready for talking about other other stuff, but uh, I just recommend in subscribing to CVE uh, newsletters because it's very important to be the <laughs> to be the first in the in the universe when uh, something really bad happens in the code base maybe uh, maybe there is a problem affecting uh, people without authentication and it does not require many uh, complexity to to trigger the to trigger the issue so i recommend to subscribe the civil e newsletter i i say this because a lot of people don't do this and it's it, this is a definitely definitely a problem uh, another stupid uh, tip is keep your platform up to date but if you have the possibility use the lts version of of Matomo. Uh, so you have not to update your software for whatever new feature is introduced and maybe because you want you don't have time to test everything but you don't you want an environment in a safe state where uh, only security patches are updated regularly and uh, please keep your users trained so it's not important to enforce two-factor authentication on your wall organic uh, base because if you don't know how to use it you will just make uh, bigger mistakes so train your user users and uh, uh, please keep your devices without malware because the majority of the vulnerabilities uh, nowadays don't come from matomo itself uh, the majority of uh, vulnerabilities come from you. So you are you, the person who have maybe security issues on your mobile phone or security issues on your Wi-Fi area, uh, security issues on your laptop. Maybe you installed a video game from a random website and now your computer is totally compromised. So I'm not saying that it's really, really huge, useful to have a very, very hardened installation if the administrat administrators are, um, have not uh, devices uh, with uh, a controlled state. Yeah, so uh, uh, try to use uh, as much as possible open source software. If you have Android user systems, like Lin Lin buy an Android dedicated for work, remove the Play Store, remove everything, uh, install FDroid, uh, remove whatever proprietary app, and uh, then you can be safe to use uh, stuff like the OTP applications. And, um, and so use as much possible uh, free software. I, I really have to say, please don't, don't think that you will be not owned because this is the most problematic assumption. So please assume that you will be owned in the future and um, invest in reading documentation, invest in exploring your tool, invest in trying to over, uh, to, to hack your system Try, try to um, to use uh, not privileged users. Try to be as try to create another Unix user on your system with low privileges, and then try to uh, to do a privilege escalation, trying to inspect uh, the your web servers and your uh, applications. And um, so uh, this is just uh, these are just bad words to remember to try to be the one that can enter in your system before someone else do this in your in for you <laughs> this is not good so thank you so much my presentation is under uh, the creative commons attribution share like you can uh, share it for whenever you want and uh, 
for whatever purpose. You can sell it, you can do whatever you want. Just please uh, put a credit to uh, at least my nickname. So saying that this presentation is by Valerio. Thank you so much for everything. Uh, can I thank again the Matomo organizers because uh, Matomo, Matomo Camp is realized with 100% uh, open source software and libre software and this is really amazing and uh, because uh, again Matomo is open source, Matomo Camp is open source and this is really a um, a really, really, really good way to engage technical communities that care about their privacy and care about software freedom. So thank you again. Uh, whatever question can be delivered to the Matrix chat. And um, I hope that uh, we had a good time together. Valeria, thank you very much uh, for your insightful talk. And yeah, you highlighted a lot of important uh, things to consider. Uh, and this is also one of my favorite topics because it is uh, mostly treated very poorly um, and even it is a topic which is neglected in many companies. Um, and also you compressed the topic very well. Uh, you had uh, you talked about many, many details uh, and also there is so much more, but I think you mentioned uh, uh, very important things. Um, Perhaps we have some uh, some questions here. Uh, if not right now, um, there are some questions from from my side also, um, because uh, you uh, are a security expert. So perhaps you can recommend uh, the the audience something like: Is there something like um, automated security audits? Is there a software for that to so check the software um, for uh, automatically for CVEs or something like that? Okay, honestly, I know the part uh, related to WordPress more than the, the part related to Matomo. Uh, there are a lot of tools. I think you can search and there are a lot of tools. I, I actually cannot recommend any of them because I, I, I recommend in being proactive and keeping the platform up to date as soon as possible and without receiving any of this uh, email or notification and uh, this is probably the best way to keep your, your system uh, up to date because uh, usually uh, normal users when they receive this kind of notification is too late because uh, maybe you are in Italy or you, you are from uh, I, I don't know and we are uh, decentralized uh, against the Matomo developers who can quickly uh, handle the situation and release a security patch and offer you an update quickly on your platform. So I recommend you just update your platform and, uh, and please feel free to, um, to share some automated tools to, um, to inspect uh, uh, maybe not up-to-dated uh, platform and uh, this kind of stuff. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you for the question. I'm very curious and thank, thank you for sharing to me uh, if you, somebody knows. Of course. And as a quick comment on that is also for the audience uh, a very important thing. As soon as an update is out, um, we mark it if it has a security uh, concern. We mark it with a minor, major or critical tag. Uh, so you know <laughs> you know how important it is to, to make this, this update. And that's wonderful. And um... Uh, are there uh, uh, more quest questions? Because I am really curious. Do we have other questions right now? Okay. So, uh, if not right now, uh, then the chat will stay open. And uh, perhaps uh, Valeria has some minutes left uh, to, to answer more questions if there are any. But thank you very much for that uh, very, very important uh, topic. And also this uh, talk will be online uh, as, a, as a video on the video platform. And yeah, uh, Valerio, thank you again uh, uh, a lot and uh, greetings to Italy. <laughs> thank you so much. And again, go Matomo, go. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for this. Thank you. And, uh, Goodbye. Bye-bye. Ciao, pane, pizza, Matomo. Ciao. <laughs>